Right, welcome back to trainbyjp.com. And first and foremost, new Train by JP clothing. Spoiling it, representing, as always. Uh, if you do get yours, make sure you use my code Kuba10. Um, especially if you are watching this video, because I believe this video is going to bring a lot of value to you and add to your arsenal with your planning of your off-season or contest prep, should you wish to do so. So I'm going to show you part number two of mapping out timelines for an optimal off-season or a prep. Um, you'll have to excuse the hair as my wife has not been well, so she's not been doing the hair. So I'm definitely well overdue, so I look a tramp. But anyway, let's get stuck into this. And I will share my screen with you with one of my clients' check-ins um, just to show you guys exactly how I like to plan my periodization for clients and myself. Um, and again, I am back working with Jordan and Meg. They are who I will be running everything by throughout this entire off-season. So definitely very much looking forward to it. So I'm going to share my screen with you all now and go through uh, exactly what uh, I do and how uh, with uh, periodizing these phases and actually going through phase settings. So Dara is currently in his off season. So I wanted to show you the steps pretty much from September, 2021 uh, as to how we mapped out his timeline. So initial push up lasted 16 weeks. Then we needed to go into a recovery ma maintenance phase. Um, as you can see here, um, we dropped down to what we'd call TRT plus and a maintenance dosage of PEDs. From here onwards, we held his body weight and then we went into the next push-up, which then brought us all the way up to pretty much this phase here. Now, we got up to a place that Dara has never been before and arguably got him very uncomfortable to a body weight of pretty much 106 kilo and a bit. And that has pretty much taken us a period of 30, 40 weeks, 43 weeks altogether with the process all around. Now, before we actually started this push-up, we did do a mini cut prior to this. So he was lean, ready, and very responsive. At 98 kilo, he was in decent condition. Let's just put it that way. He was in good enough shape to be able to execute a very long push-up. From there onwards, we pretty much stayed in a, in a surplus for a long time. And then we actually went into a bit of a mini cut on push-up phase week number two, and the mini cut lasted four weeks. So this phase here was actually a mini cut slash resensitization phase, as you can see. Now, the second mini cut that we did, we actually got him a lot leaner than he's ever been before, especially at this body weight here. When we compared these pictures at 97.9 kilo versus the 98.8 in his first mini cut, it was incomparable. His glutes were pretty much coming through at this body weight here. So first and foremost, create a long runway for progression. Whether you're coming back off the contest prep or you are going into an off-season, make sure that your position is lean enough to be able to carry out a long-term off-season. If you start your off-season push-up phase fat, you're not going to be responsive to drugs or any food, and your body's not going to be a good place to really gain any muscle tissue. This is why, again, that will be a video for another call, this is why I am so huge on post-contest phase and treating it as a recovery phase. If you find yourself gaining, I would say generally anything above 10 to 15 pounds over your stage weight across that four to five weeks, you are literally ruining your off-season, in my opinion. Um, again, you have to get to a place where you reach homeostasis, you start feeling normal, your health metrics are back on point, sleep back on point, food focus is down a little bit. Um, and then you should consider your off-season once you've gone through these five weeks uh, of kind of recovering. Um, that's what I like to call it. So post-show post, post show phase, before I actually get into this, or post-diet phase, is all about recovering as a reference point. If you have reached, you know, gnarly levels of condition, legit levels of condition. If you haven't and you're fat, that's not applicable to you guys. Uh, you know, that, that should always see a, a very slow progression from that. So moving back onto this, uh, and by the way, I can actually send some studies over uh, from Trexler. He actually did a study on competitive bodybuilders coming out of a diet phase, they all got in legit, legit condition. And the study actually showed that first five weeks post-show, they didn't gain any muscle. And all that happened is just regain some body fat and fullness and glycogen uh, in the muscle. And it wasn't actually new muscle tissue. So again, point proven. And that 
is kind of the same for assisted guys, unless you are pushing the drugs out of the gate post show, which none of us do anymore. Um, that that practice has definitely changed. So moving back into this, off the back of this four week tidy up, and all we needed really is four weeks because. We got him up to 103 kilo. And as you can see, 21 a week push up. And we only went from 98 up to 103.2 kilo. His body composition barely changed throughout that time. It barely changed. We pushed him as hard as we possibly could because he was experiencing a lot of the long COVID symptoms throughout that period. So we couldn't really push him as hard as we wanted to. Nevertheless, throughout this period, you know, Dara did extremely well. Body comp was great. And as you can see, shaving off pretty much in four to five weeks, shaving off five kilos-ish, um, literally got him in shape where we could have had him stage ready, fully peeled, four to five weeks' time. Now, off the back of this, second push-up phase begun, week 26, March. Uh, and again, this pretty much took us 21 weeks. And that's including his recovery phase and a couple of weeks away on holiday um, and again, the total drugs here are actually total weekly drugs as outlined throughout this recovery phase, guys. So we managed to hold his new body weight that he's never reached before. From here, the second push-up, because he was so, so lean, the rate of gain was somewhat higher than last push-up. Because he was leaner, we had a longer runway, and his body was responsive. We did not force anything either. As you can see from food progressions here, which are outlined, we did not force feed him. We did not push anything excessively. We made the right adjustments at the right time. And then his body weight moved up, held, moved up and held. And as you can see off the back of this last food increase, we pretty much held this all the way through. Now, if you're wondering why these highlights in yellow, these are just D-volume weeks. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we did D-volume week here. So these are D-volume weeks and that's pretty much tracked as well. Um, just to give us data and reference to work back from for future references and future push-ups. And from there onwards, regarding the deloads, we actually have this pre-planned in. But secondly, as you can see, the rate of gain was quite controlled in the second push-up. So we've gone pretty much from 98 kilo up to a very lean and respectable 106 and thereabouts. And we held that, as you can see, his body weight held for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. And let me tell you, it was hard for him to do that. However, it was certainly needed and it paid off. From there onwards, after his recovery phase, we needed a tidy up. We needed a mini cut. Now, the reason why this mini cut actually taken six weeks was simple. The two weeks when he was on holiday, he barely trained, barely stuck to any structure. So the first two weeks back, his body was kind of rebuilding and restructuring itself. So he not only recomped heavily for the th first two weeks, but it has taken two weeks for him to kind of regain his drive and his functions. From there onwards, it was crazy, crazy changes. Now, we reached a body weight low of 99.8 kilo. And again, this body weight low was even leaner than his latest body weight low of 98.4. So as you can see, guys, a pattern each time, each and every single time we push up, we reset, we hold, we diet, resensitize. And then each start point, every single time we resensitize is bigger, leaner, and better. This is how I periodize, periodize. This is how I structure things with all my clients, males, females. Obviously, females will not have this section in place. Uh, it's going to look a bit different person to person with timing uh, and all the other bits around it. Um, but again, this little reset did actually see us reach new levels of size, new levels of condition. Now, we are pretty much back up to 101 kilo here, and he's actually leaner in this in this position then he were finishing here. Reason why? As you can see off the back of this, right? Small food progressions. And from here, we did not actually do the push-up where we actually push the food. We removed our politics. We reduced steps, as you can see here, guys. And his body responded. So less is more at times. I am not a fan of the coaches that just throw the kitchen sink in and hope for the best with all the cardio, all the steps. They have no understanding or perception of fatigue management and recovery. Now, as you can see here, guys, during his mini court, I started pulling his steps down and he continued to improve and get leaner without changing his nutrition or increasing his lipolytics. From here, simple adjustments week to week based off the visuals and the feedback that I'm seeing. And again, steps are very, very minimal now. 
his calories are, are creeping back up and he's only just improved and gotten leaner. The yellow lines are, again, the volume weeks, which, again, I definitely believe that he is going to need one this coming week. We are now week number 16. This is the current week that we are in. He's actually checking in tomorrow. And then we are going to be going into our devolume week here. Um, so that's pretty much the structure and outline of this and how I am currently planning the remainder of